Welcome back to SuperCloud 7 here on theCUBE. I'm Paul Gillen. And if you were with us for SuperCloud 6, you might have seen our interview with Hari Vasudev at Walmart Global Tech, who talked about Element, a very ambitious global platform the company has built to enable analytical processing, artificial intelligence all across the world, deployment, development to uh, multiple data centers and cloud regions. We're going to talk a little bit more today about the platform elements that under, underlie that. And with us to do that is Anil Madan. He is the Senior Vice President of Cloud and Data at Walmart Global Tech. Anil, welcome to theCUBE. The Paul, thanks for having me here. Anil, a 25-year veteran of data management, background with Intuit, eBay, PayPal, working for some very large and ambitious projects at those companies. Can you describe the key elements of this single data lake that you're constructing for Walmart? Paul, well, thanks for having me. Uh, sure. Like first, maybe I'll give a little bit context, and then on top of that, I'll uh, address the question on what are the key elements. Look, at the highest level, we deal, we manage from a data lifecycle thousands and thousands of data sources, right? On any, any given day, data moves from our operational stores into our data warehouse, and we do that across in a, in a multi-cloud environment. The key aspects of that uh, in the data lifecycle is data moving in a more in a raw format, coming into a, into a central lake. It goes through certain transformations and quality to create a, a data catalog. That data catalog helps pretty much power every aspect of our analytics and machine learning. Now with that as the background context, right, the key elements of our, of our uh, uh, enterprise data lake is just how we have built this in a centralized format form by still respecting the foundational elements of security, data sovereignty, because we are in a global market with multiple uh, countries internationally. We have to respect both the regulatory requirements of the different markets, as well as the privacy requirements for our customers. And then in that process, we of course work with our, very closely with our security and digital citizenship teams to create this in a, in, a, in a seamless manner for our data consumers. Now, a key part of Element is what you call the triplet model. Um, what is the, refresh our memory on what is the triplet model and what are the platform elements of that model? Sure, look at the heart of our triplet is really the, what we have is the hybrid multi-cloud strategy, which basically helps us seamlessly integrate and run cloud agnostic uh, workloads, both uh, application workloads as well as ML workloads. Now cloud, of course, powers every part of our omnichannel experience, whether it's our e-commerce and our experiences for our for our members and 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 customers in stores and clubs, respectively, uh, distribution centers and fulfillment centers, and all our enterprise applications and how our associates uh, interact with that uh, when they come in every day. Now, at the heart of this, when we talk about the triplet, we have two public cloud providers and a private cloud coming in in a symmetrical fashion so that we can basically run hybrid multi-cloud workloads at, at scale. The key aspects of this triplet is a one-ops environment, which is again an open source cloud management platform, something what we call as WCNP or Walmart Cloud Native Platform, which basically enables us to switch applications across Walmart public and private clouds, and a data abstraction layer, which is very critical in how we move data across these cloud providers intelligently. Now, by pairing these public and private cloud providers, what we've done is, we've and, and having them replicated at three distinct regions, which is namely West, Central, and East, we've enabled what we call as the triplet. Complementing this triplet is 10,000 of our edge and store locations to create one of what we call as our, uh, the biggest hybrid distributed cloud in, on the planet. Now this helps basically power every aspect of, of our compute, storage, and, and uh, workload placement. Element as such now is built upon this triplet model. What it provides basically is our on-demand infrastructure where we can take different compute types the CPU, GPU, TPUs, and run them portably across these different cloud providers. 
We also have a very, very matured ML ops deployment framework, which basically helps us deploy these workloads in minutes versus days, which would take to, to, to do that across these cloud. And those things in conjunction now are helping power all our generative AI workloads as well, because now we can interoperate different kinds of LLMs, large language models, whether those are, again, when uh, cloud provided or open source to run them seamlessly across this, this triplet architecture. So you've got a lot of moving parts here and that requires abstraction layers uh, to make it easier for the applications to access them. What, what are the key abstraction layers in, in Element? Yeah, so look at the heart of it is the substrate which I just walked you through, right? Which is the triplet, the one ops and the cloud native, which helps us basically uh, interoperate workloads and and uh, and deploy them in again in minutes across these cloud providers. On top of that, you have to start overlaying the principles of data governance and responsible AI when it comes to uh, AI in general. Now, this includes things like safety, security, privacy, data sovereignty. You know, transparency for how we use these. Uh, you know, how the ethical use of AI in general, and then of course compliance as we when we do that. Now, with, with all of those substrates and the principles, right, the different layers which basically start coming in play for, for, for when it comes to element is, you know, first and foremost, the, you know, you have an LLM gateway, which helps us, again, interoperate these, these open source and cloud provided uh, LLMs at scale. We built LLM evaluators, which help us, again, with all the data governance and privacy pieces I just outlined, right? Uh, distributed training and optimization frameworks, which can help us deploy this uh, both for training and for inference at speed and scale, because some all of these workloads, of course, need both speed and scale, and we want to do that. And then again, at the heart of it is really the security and guardrails so that we can prevent unauthorized access to, to, to data. So those are all the different layers which start coming in play on top of really the cloud uh, itself uh, as we power this across for our advice. You've assembled a great many components, uh, which you say are best of breed components in putting together Element. What were your guiding principles in choosing those components and how do you leave yourself the flexibility to swap in new ones if something better comes along? Yeah, that's a great question, Paul. So look, I mean, uh, the, the key thing there is, look, everything is in at, at, at Walmart is anchored around our mission and purpose, right? So really get to, to outline that, look, we are a people-led, tech-powered, omni-channel retailer. And our whole purpose and goal in life is to save money so that we can help our customers live better. Now that's at the heart of our mission and purpose. And that also, some degree, drives a lot of our guiding principles. Now when it comes to element as such, right? Like the principles we have used which is no different than every other part of our the global tech and how we build that is we prioritize data governance, right? Every aspect of data governance as far as how data gets used, consumed, uh, shared becomes very, very critical. Security is a critical underpinning to everything we do. So we make sure, you know, it's how data gets, uh, gets used, consumed, what who has authorization to that becomes a critical piece into our, into our guiding principle. A big part of it is, you know, we are we have to operate with speed. It's a highly competitive environment. We want to make sure that, you know, we can work with speed as we create the common platform which can allow leverage. Cost, I mean, EDLC, everyday low cost, is a critical part of our of our value system because at the end of the day, whatever savings we do, we have that back to our customers in serving them with the everyday low price guarantee. And then a big part of what we do is avoid vendor lock-in. And then uh, you know our, our, our commitment as far as the responsible use of AI, whether it's our ethical practices or our digital trust commitments, all of those have to be critical piece. Now, all of these pieces come in play as we basically have built element. And then that the, these pieces, as we build those with coupled with the data abstraction layers, help us swap different things fairly quickly so that so that we're not married to any uh, single provider or technology. 
So once again, the value of that abstraction layer. Uh, you spoke about open source earlier. How important is open source to your strategy? Look, we are very, very unique, and and you know, and and of course, at the scale at which we operate, we are industry. We are not only just an industry leader in one industry, but you know, we are in many. And then our scale is unmatched in that sense. Now, if something is core to our business, and it's a competitive advantage. Of course, we'll go build it ourselves, right? Versus uh, look at look at buying that at the scale at which we operate. Now, open source, of course, becomes a critical part to our EDLC, right? Because every dollar saved pretty much is, is you know, is, goes back to how we can save our customers and our and members money, right? Now, ML uh, uh, and Element in general is, again, with its with its hyper growth right now and how we are tying that to our, to every piece of our, of our business becomes a very critical piece. And then open source, and it comes to the, innovation and evolution which is happening becomes even more important, right? So things like how we look at ML libraries, right? Like the open sourceness around just that, the the how we do ML offset scale, the, the event of now vector databases and how uh, Gen AI is disrupting the space. And then the open source uh, LLMs and how they are coming in place, right? So all of those become extremely, extremely important. So look at when we come to building this and creating the competitive advantage in this space. I saw in a recent interview you did with Google Cloud Next where you talked about one component of this strategy was to unify literally thousands of databases into a single platform. I'm sure that's a problem that many CIOs can identify with. What did that look like? How did you bridge all of these different architectures and schemas? Yeah, that's again a very, very uh, good question. Look, I mean, we, uh, have different databases and we, we run a large fleet of databases and operational data stores. Now, the way we do that is, of course, there are different kinds and categories of these databases. We use what we call as polyglot storage with SQL, NoSQL, I mean, they're document databases, the graph databases, there are cache technologies, right? So you have a wide spread of technologies to basically be leveraged uh, with, so that the right tools can be used for the right workload. Now for us, as we look at this, our goal has been to unify these to a single platform so that the application teams who are consuming these get a single interface in how they are consumed, which means we've built common layers of abstraction in how we've created uh, uh, SDKs with these so that the application workloads can basically use and consume these databases in a, in a seamless way, right? We also have built traction layers and how we intelligently move data across the cloud, especially even into the centralized lake, which we talked about. Now, by doing that, what it also helps us in unifying is creating standard data security standards, the security around all of these, standards of data retention and creating those policies, and then standards of observability in, and telemetry in how data, and so that we can have our application teams go deeper triage and diagnose issues as well. So by unifying all of these into a co common platform, what it helps us is enable all the other pieces we talked about, data governance and a central data lake. Uh, so what does this look like? I mean, to a software developer, you're not able to run a query across multiple databases, presumably, but how, does, uh, how do you enable the software developers to, to work with this level of abstraction? Right, like, so what we do there again is, look, the software developers and application developers basically get SDKs, and again, these are open source SDKs and cloud-provided SDKs, which basically help help them to interact through a layer of abstraction to the to the databases. Now, what that helps us is, is, you know, as we do that, we can basically swap these layers as we can migrate to and create database portability as well because we have to operate these in a multi-cloud hybrid environment. So the application developers get abstracted out of that so that they can seamlessly uh, yeah, you know, change databases if they need to, while they still go interact with a single abstraction layer in, in how they go access these, uh, these, these tools. Uh, another component of Element is something you call responsible AI. Uh, how does platform selection, how does responsible AI guide you in platform selection? 
Yeah, I think that's again amazing, amazing question. So look, we basically have a very strong security process and digital trust and commitment standards. So we use that in how we actually scale something like responsible AI within within the enterprise. Now, of course, these need to come in with guardrails, gates, and, and guidelines, which are implemented as standards and mechanisms, theoretical mechanisms in how we create tools, frameworks, and services for our application teams and machine learning and data scientist uh, associates so that they get a consistent interface to these tools and platforms. Now, what that helps them is like, hey, they don't need to go solve for things like bias or trust or, or looking at how they deal with privacy or data sovereignty because all of those pieces are basically done for them in a common, consistent manner across by leveraging the platform. And um, how, how have you protected against against becoming locked into to different proprietary platforms? Not everything yeah. is open source, presumably. Yeah, so again, that goes back to, you know, like what we were just talked about, right? The different abstraction layers in conjunction, right? So to, you have the cloud management abstraction layer with one ops, you have the workload management layer with our WCNP, and then you have the data management layer in how we uh, provide SDKs to our application developers, as well as how we intelligently move data across these clouds. So combination of these abstraction layers basically help us then provide those vendor agnostic best of breed technologies, which can basically help them swap with speed if we need to, while still give them the ability to deploy these at scale fairly quickly and rapidly in this hybrid multi-cloud, right? So that both training and inference can be done at speed and scale across uh, in, in the context of ML. What are some of the ways that you're seeing early payoffs from, from Element? Can you pardon me? Can you repeat that question, Paul? What are some of the ways you're seeing payoffs from Element in, in these early stages? Look, the payoffs are across all aspects, right? Like we, uh, and the developer productive is just a huge, huge uh, payoff, right? So every developer, every machine learning engineer going and, and going and solving for all of these pieces around just getting access, authorized access to data, dealing with all the responsible AI uh, principles, and working through our data retention uh, uh, while maintaining the privacy. They don't have to go then solve that multiple times. So that, that the, the biggest benefit to these, uh, these application engineers and data scientists is they can rapidly train their workloads at scale. They're not going figuring this out with every LLM as far as what they're training or how how the how the LLM would scale? How would it? How would they basically have to go solve for quality, yeah. privacy, uh, transparency across these? They can swap those LLMs at at will because now they are looking at uh, common tools to help them do that. They 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 not going and sourcing data to create all of that because now all of that has been solved for them in a common enterprise data lake. So they just go. They pick their algorithm or what they want and they basically go and they're operational. Now, what that helps unlock is the speed in which we are moving in this space, right? When it comes to going executing and deploying that for all our different experiences, right? Whether it's our customer and member experiences in our e-commerce, whether it's our store associate experiences, whether it's how we do deal with productivity at large, how we deal with operational and engineering excellence, and how we're dealing with content enrichment. So all of those pieces are being unlocked at speed and scale across uh, rapidly because it's just helping unlock all of that. And Walmart shoppers are now seeing, and we'll see more of these innovations in the way they interact with your website, the in-store recommendation systems, the, the, uh, your ability to better predict uh, supply and, and stocking. Uh, really remarkable stuff coming out of your group. Anil Madan, Senior Vice President of Cloud and Data at Walmart Global Tech. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Paul, for having me. We'll be right back at SuperCloud 7.